Good evening, everyone. And tonight we are going to do something uh, very unusual for me, and I'm a little bit nervous about it, because this is an issue I don't know a heck of a lot about, but I enjoy very much. Tonight we're going to talk about music. Uh, and we're going to talk about music in the sense of how songs and poetry can sometimes do something that long books cannot, that in a moment, in a sound, in a verse, they can bring souls together in solidarity and in struggle. Uh, and throughout uh, our history, we've had some extraordinary musicians uh, and sadly, many of them have been kind of forgotten. They're not talked about very, very much. So tonight, what I would like to do is uh, put together six or seven songs uh, that have had an impact on my life, songs that I have known uh, more or less for my whole life. Uh, and also with the goal here of trying to uh, revitalize, if you like, uh, progressive music, working class music, union music. Uh, I think that given the growth of the trade union movement right now, given the economic problems that we are facing, it would it really be a good idea for people to become familiar with some of these great songwriters and singers and songs uh, that have been so important in the last uh, century or so. So that's Number one, what I hope to accomplish with a, a, a short playlist uh, of some songs that I'm going to play for you and tell you, you know, why I respond the way I've responded uh, to those songs. And, and the second thing we want to do is in the not too distant future is to uh, not have to go back to the past for great songs, but take a look at contemporary songwriters, contemporary musicians uh, and see what's going on today. Uh, I don't have to tell anybody this country today, the world faces enormous crises in terms of climate, in terms of income and wealth disparity, uh, in terms of, you know, a disastrous health care system, in terms of half our people living paycheck to paycheck, etc., etc. You all know the issues. And there are people who are writing music, talking about those issues very, very well. And we hope, hope to maybe uh, get some of those artists together, put a playlist together and Maybe we can go on from there. So without further ado, uh, let me do something I never dreamed I would be doing, but let's start uh, listening. Let's start uh, bringing forward uh, a couple of songs, and let me say a few words about them. Bria, what do you got? This land is your land, and this land is my land, from California to the New York Island, from the Redwood Forest to the Gulf Stream waters. This land was made for you and me. Okay. Um, I think, uh, you know, in my presidential campaigns, we kind of adopted that song as our anthem, played it at almost all of our rallies. And it was written and, and sung, in this case, by Woody Guthrie. And Woody Guthrie was an extraordinary uh, songwriter and musician. He was a balladeer, uh, talked about what was going on among poor people and working people uh, in the 30s. Um, and uh, this song to me, what this land is your land, what it kind of means to me is, yeah, it is our land. It doesn't belong to a handful of billionaires. It's a land that all of us have an opportunity to enjoy and flourish in and not be controlled uh, by uh, a few extraordinarily uh, wealthy and greedy people. So this to me is a very moving song uh, and uh, one of my favorites. Okay, Bria, what else we got? Next we have Solidarity Forever. Solidarity forever. Solidarity. 
forever, for the union makes us strong. When the union's inspiration through the workers' blood shall run, there can be no power greater anywhere beneath the sun. Yet what force on earth is weaker than the feeble strength of one? But the union makes us strong. Solidarity forever. Solidarity forever. Solidarity forever. For the union makes us strong. Now that is uh, a, a beautiful song that says so much. Uh, the singer here is Pete Seeger. And uh, I had the opportunity, the fortune, of uh, meeting uh, Pete Seeger on a number of occasions. I recall many, many years ago doing an event with him in Brattleboro, Vermont, and we did one in Washington, uh, D.C. And uh, Pete was an extraordinary musician in more than any other musician, you know, Willie Nelson does it too, but I, I think Pete, more than any musician I've ever seen, involved the people in his music, whether they were kids, he'd often do performances for kids, for adults, everybody's singing along and having a good time. Uh, and obviously what this song is about, solidarity forever. And what it is, is when we stand together, all of us, in a union, or in society, there's nothing that could stop us. Ordinary people, working people are the vast majority of the people. And the only way the billionaire class gets richer is when they divide us up. So the meaning of the song, the strength of the song is, is solidarity, which is an unbelievable concept. You know, it's a concept that over the years was talked about not only in unions, not only in American society, but global society, working people coming together to end wars to end pollution, to end climate change. When we stand together, when we are strong, when we're all alone, ain't much we're gonna be doing. So this is an important song, Pete Singer, a great artist. Okay, Bria, what else we got? Okay, let me. Now, if you want to fire away, just let me tell you what to do. You got to talk to the workers in the shop with you. You got to build you a union, got to make it strong. But if you all stick together, boys, it won't be long. You get shorter hours, better working conditions, vacations we pay, take the kids to the seashore. It ain't quite this simple, so I better explain just why you got to ride on the union train. Cause if you wait for the boss to raise your pay, we'll all be waiting till judgment day. We'll all be buried. Gone the heaven. St. Peter will be the straw ball then. Okay. Well, that's uh, the Talking Union by the Almanac Singers. And I don't remember the year that the Almanac Singers were around, maybe in the 50s, 60s. Uh, but a great group of people, followed later on by the Weavers. Anyone remember the Weavers? Pete Seeger was in that. Uh, and Seeger, I think, was in the Almanac Singers, maybe with Woody Guthrie as well. I'm not sure. Uh, but you know, that song is about, uh, and we're seeing it today. We're seeing it at Amazon, we're seeing it at Starbucks, we're seeing it all across this country. Uh, railroad workers, uh, if you want to earn decent wages, same thing. You want decent benefits, decent working conditions. The only way you're going to get it is to have a union to stand up and fight for what you are entitled to. So that is uh, a, a really wonderful song called Talking Union by the Almanac Singers. Okay, let's go to Union Made. <laughs> there once was a Union Made who never was afraid of the goons and gangs and the company banks and the deputy sheriffs who made the raid. She went to the Union Hall when a meeting it was called. And when the company boys came round, she always stood her ground. Oh, you can scare me, I'm sticking to the union. I'm sticking to the union. I'm sticking to the union. Oh, you can scare me, I'm sticking to the union. I'm sticking to the union till the day I die. That is a, a great song. Uh, it's called A Union Made. The singer is Bobby McGee, and I don't know a whole lot about her. Uh, but I am very familiar with uh, her song and her rendition. And obviously, it, it, it 
speaks to the fact that uh, if we don't let the bosses scare us, if we don't let big money frighten us, if we all stand together, women and men and uh, the kids, if we all stand together, uh, we're going to win. And I got to tell you, just in the last couple of years, uh, I and my office have been involved in a number of strikes all across the country. And uh, the degree to which we have seen great people at the local level stand together, uh, taking on the corporate greed that is so prevalent today has been very, very inspiring. So this is a beautiful, beautiful song to my mind. All right, now we're going to hear another song, a little bit different in rendition by a guy who turns out, in my view, to have been one of the really exceptional people of the 20th century, a remarkable man who uh, was brilliant. He was a linguist. He spoke, I don't know, a dozen, two dozen languages, great singer, actor. When he was young, he was an All-American football player. Uh, and what the establishment and the system did to him uh, was a real, real tragedy. And that's Paul Robeson, of course. Uh, and uh, he had an extraordinary voice. And we're going to hear uh, his song, Joe Hill. That is just a beautiful, beautiful song by Paul Robson, who was one of the great singers of his time. And it's about a man I hope all of you are familiar with. And that always makes me think we've got to do more in labor history. A lot of young people don't know much about this a guy named Joe Hill, uh, who was framed uh, on a so-called uh, murder. He was framed uh, and executed. He was shot uh, in Salt Lake City. Uh, and he was a union organizer. And, um, you know, it speaks to, presumably Joe Hill said, you know, and as he was about to die, you know, organize and you know, I'll never die, my spirit lives on. And, and it's, it's a very moving story that as long as people stand up and fight for justice, none of us dies. So uh, a beautiful song by a, one of the great singers of the 20th century. Okay, now we have another song which I think in a few words says it all, to my mind at least, about what politics uh, is about. Which side are you on? Neutral there, you'll either be 
a union man or upper J.H. Blair. Which side are you on? Which side are you on? Okay, and you know, I think uh, very often uh, when I give speeches, I use that phrase because it's the essence of what politics is about. Politics is many, many things. But at the end of the day, which is in, not to say you can't make mistakes going forward, we all do, but you have to make a determination which side are you on. Uh, are you on the side of the big money interests who contribute huge amounts of money into politics? Uh, who own a significant part of the media, uh, who control the economy. Are you on their side or are you prepared to have the courage uh, to stand up for ordinary working people and people who are struggling to keep their heads above water? Uh, and so I think in, in just in one phrase, it tells everything you need to know about uh, what politics I is about. So that is a beautiful song. And it came out, I'm not quite sure the history of that song, uh, but it's it listed at least at United Mine Workers. It's a song that I guess uh, the mine workers uh, adopted as their own. Uh, now the last song uh, we're going to hear is a beautiful song from Judy Collins called Bread and Roses. Go marching, marching in the beauty of the day. A million kitchens of Spray, our touch with all the radiance that a sudden sound discloses for the people here us singing bread and roses, bread and roses. As we go marching, marching, we battle to for men, for they are women. That's, a, again, another beautiful song by a great singer. Um, and, and the message there is we have to keep our eyes on the prize and know what we're fighting for. What Bread and Roses means to me, and, and by the way, this came out of the suffragette movement, the fight for women's right to vote, is that, in a sense, bread means economic justice. It means all of us are entitled to health care, to education, to decent housing, to decent wages. But life is more than that. And the roses aspect is we're entitled to beauty. We're entitled to, to culture. Uh, we're entitled to expanding our mind and education. And we're entitled to a life, not just the drudgery of having to go to work to make a living. And uh, so I think that's what that song is about to me. And, and a very beautiful one indeed. So, uh, that's it. Uh, I kind of ventured into a field that I don't know all that much about, and I apologize <laughs> for uh, maybe getting some things wrong, but bottom line here is I think music is extraordinarily important in creating solidarity, in bringing people together, in saying in a few words what sometimes you can't say in a book. Uh, so I wanted tonight to, to just uh, bring to you some of the songs that have meant a lot to me in my life, uh, older songs, uh, some of them go way back, uh, written by some of the best songwriters in the modern history of this country. Uh, and I hope we can keep their work alive. It's important that young people kind of get a sense of, of that music and, and where it came from and what it meant to the people at that time. But obviously, in addition, we've got to create uh, and get the word out about the music of today because today's issues are different than they were 50 years ago. Uh, and I know that there are great writers out there and musicians out there who are singing that and kind of next time around, we'll, we'll deal with music in, in a more contemporary sense. So thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, and uh, we're going to get this playlist up 
uh, on our social media and uh, hope you uh, um, decide to listen to some of those songs. Thank you all. Good night.